In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between binomial probabilities uh, and the various ways that these questions can be asked. They're kind of subtle, some of them, so we need to pay attention to signs so we get the right answers. All right, so here's a bunch of questions that could possibly be asked in a binomial type question. We have, what's the probability that the number of successes is is exactly equal to 2, the second one is less than or equal to 2, the third one is less than 2, as uh, crazily as that is written, let's fix that, less than 2. Fourth one, greater than or equal to 3, greater than 3, and then here we are between 1 and 3, where 1 is included and 3 is excluded. So let's go back and look at the differences here. Remember our less than sign and we have a less than or equal to sign. It's important to be able to read these go left to right. X is less than or equal to 2. You could also say it, that 2 is greater than or equal to X, but um, we tend to put the X first. Remember the alligator will eat the bigger number, so that means that X has to be less than 2, but then this sign says, well, we can include 2 as well. So let's do a little highlighting here. So the probability that x equals 2, that means that we're only looking for this one outcome, x equals 2. Let's go to the next one, less than or equal to 2. So that means that two successes is okay, and then anything less than is also okay. So 1 as well as 0. So I'm shading all the way down to the left. The third one, the probability that the number of successes is less than 2. So if I go to my number line, I have to be below 2, so anything below 2 is okay, 1 and 0. Notice that all my number lines only stop at 4. That's because we have 4 successes. That's the most, or sorry, 4 is our number of trials, which is also the maximum number of successes we can have. Don't forget 0 as far as the number of successes, because it's also okay to have 0 successes out of any of our trials. Zeros can also get, often get forgotten, and people usually stop at 1. But don't forget 0, because we have discrete outcomes. 0 is a possibility. Down on to the fourth possibility with binomial probabilities, x greater than or equal to 3. So 3 is okay, and so is 4 the probability that x is greater than 3. So we have more than 3 successes. So here's 3, but we have to be more than 3. So we're going to highlight here at 4. And then the last one, uh, it's kind of a combination. I just randomly chose these numbers here. x is between 1 and 3, but 1 is included because of the equal sign, and 3 is excluded because of the strictly less than sign there. So um, we will highlight the 1 because that is okay. And anything greater than 1, so that's 2, but not more than 3 and not equal to 3 either. So we just have uh, 1 and 2 right here. Okay, so the point of all that is to identify what outcomes are actually possible for our binomial probabilities. So I'm going to write go back to writing here. And I'm going to write some alternates here. So the probability that x equals 2, pretty straightforward. A calculator would say, okay, I want to do a binome PDF. And the order that we put things in is n and p and x with actual commas between them. So if n is 4, and p is, oh, I don't know, whatever number you end up putting in there, we want to put 2 for the number of successes. Of course, when you put this into your calculator, you're not going to put in p, the actual letter. You're going to put in like 0.25 or 0.05 or 0.7, whatever the probability of a success actually is. With the x less than or equal to 2, this is a slightly different binomial calculation. On a TI calculator, you'd say binom... CDF. Notice the C there? That means cumulative. So when I put in 4, comma, P, comma, 2, it's going to count all the probabilities starting at 2, going down. So starting at 2, 
going down to one, adding the probability of one success, to adding the probability of zero successes. On the first one, we use PDF. P, you can kind of think of it as for probability, single probability. We only wanted two, so I had only highlighted two here. My third example here, probability of x less than 2. So I'd highlighted the, the 1 and the 0. On a calculator, I would say binome CDF. So we have four successes. P would be our probability, whatever that number is. But then where do I start counting down? I don't want to include 2. I drop down to the next number, which is 1. So I'm going to put in a 1 right here. So binome CDF with 1, and then it will accumulate or add together the probability of 1 success and 0 success, and then total it for us. Oh, these are little underlines, not equal signs, just to clarify. Then the probability of x greater than or equal to 3. Our number line shows, says, add up the probability of 3 successes and 4 successes. So I could literally say, find the probability that x x equals 3, add it to the probability that x equals 4, and I would get an answer. And that would be absolutely correct. But there's another way to think about this, and that's using a complement. So I'm going to use a different color here. If I've highlighted it 3 and 4, the complement is right here. Oh, highlight. Highlight the 0 1 and 2, everything's been highlighted in some form or another, with one color or another. But if I want to find the probability of x greater than or equal to 3, I can use a complement rule and say, well, what do I uh, need to do instead? I need to take the whole, so take 100%, and subtract what I don't want. I do not want anything that is 2 or less. Probability that x is less than or equal to 2. So if I find these probabilities of 0, 1, and 2 successes, that's what this little piece right here is showing, subtract it from 1, that gives me the complement, which is the leftovers, which is the 3 and the 4 probability. So Notice how we had greater than or equal to 3. Kind of like an opposite of that is less than or equal to 2. That's how you can tell what numbers to use. You kind of drop down by 1 and then use that same less than or equal to sign. So if I did this on the calculator, I'd find a probability of x less than or equal to 2, get an answer, and then subtract that from 1. Now here we have the probability of x greater than 3. I'm going to use a complement again. I've highlighted what I want. That was greater than 3 was a equivalent to saying 4. So the opposite of that, the complement here, is 3 down to 0. So while I could calculate the probability of, let's see, equals the probability that x equals 4, that's a direct way. And maybe it's not too complicated, actually, on your calculator, because it is only one probability. But if this was out of, let's say, 100, and, uh, n equals 100, I mean, you wouldn't be calculating the probability of 4 plus the probability of 5 and then 6, because you'd have to go up to 100. It'd be a lot of work. So we'll use a complement instead. We'll take what is left over and what we don't want to add into it. We don't want to add 0, 1, 2, or 3. So probability of x is less than or equal to 3. That's what we're going to be removing. And then the last part of this problem, um, 1 uh, is less than or equal to x, which is less than 3. So directly, I could take the probability that x equals 1 and add it to the probability that x equals 2. I looked at my number line and was able to figure this out. Pretty straightforward calculation, add up the 1 and the 2. But w when you have a lot more numbers, like the x is between 1 and 50, you probably don't want to be adding up all of those singleton values. So what we'll do is we'll start up at the, look at the end here and say, well, I need to be less than 3. So what is that? Uh, less than 3 starts at 2. 
So the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, I'm going to highlight this on the, the page here. So start at 2 and go down. So that is less than 3. But then I need to remove stuff because I want to have my x's stop at 1. So that means removing the 0. So that's everything that's below uh, 1. So 0. And well, there's not really much below 0. So I kind of drew my arrows a little, uh, a little crazy there. So I will subtract the probability that x is equal to 0. So if I'm less than or equal to 2, that includes 2, 1, and 0 probabilities. But I don't want to be anything below 1, so I'll subtract the 0 probability. And what's left, see where these purple lines duplicate? There's only shading above the 1 and the 2, right where the orange was. If I do these two calculations and subtract, I'll get the probability of 1 or 2 outcomes, which is just what I wanted. So what we've shown here is that uh, we have about one of every type of problem here written in this kind of medium blue color, but they can often be rewritten in a different way so that you can calculate them sometimes easier. I had a small sample size, or no, I mean trial size of four, but this becomes really helpful when you have larger ends and there's a lot more probabilities to calculate.